To talk about homelessness in Fort Worth, and you're going to talk about East Lancaster Avenue. It's home to a couple of shelters and a lot more sad stories. But our Todd Unger found one that ends with hope. It's tonight, tonight's WFAA original. You'll find no shortage of stories as to why men and women call a two mile stretch of pavement named Lancaster their home. I've never seen the flowers bloom here. For Bobby Roberts, we put our tent down here every night. Who spent three years homeless in this area. This is no life for, for a human being. Being back seems like a lifetime ago. Some will work out. In reality, it's gonna be all right. it was an identity ago. Yeah, I had given up. I had come to the point where I just said, forget it. Robert's story begins as an infant in 1967. Taken away from his birth mother by child services in LA, he was soon adopted by an older couple from Oklahoma. Those parents passed away when he was in high school, and suddenly the teenager didn't have much direction and drifted from city to city. In Sherman, Texas. I've lived in Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, I've been in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He kept an old ID until he didn't. Then he used an alias, had a stint behind bars, and ended up aimless working odd jobs when he got out. But when he finally landed on the streets of North Texas three years ago at age 47, he decided to refocus, maybe find a job or even a home. That's when hope met reality. Because if you don't have an ID, you, you might as well, you know, you're out of society. The man simply had no documentation to prove himself. Without an ID or your critical documents, you can't do anything. You're like in quicksand. Denise Yerth took on the case. She's a critical document specialist at the Day Resource Center, which helps hundreds of Fort Worth's homeless trying to get back on their feet. For you, how extensive was this? A lot of hours and work and phone calls. She quickly discovered Bobby's actual birth certificate, social security and other vital info were locked behind that sealed adoption all those years ago. Not until last winter, three years after they first sought help, did the Oklahoma courts sign off on unsealing the file, which led to a Texas ID. Now I have an apartment, a nice apartment. and. Uh... Is, I mean, five months ago, I couldn't see this. You know, I couldn't see none of this. He also couldn't imagine holding a steady job or meeting Elizabeth Brandon, a 51-year-old from Denton. My hair and scalp and everything was just tingling. I was like, oh my God, 49 years. That's the picture that I remember yeah. the most. See, when Bobby finally got those unsealed documents, he started learning about his birth family. And so he's in the background and I'm right there. Was it long before he came across an obituary for his birth mother? You know, I seen that and I said, man, that's a That's mess. when he read about the sister. Just think about it, we're back. Who had resettled just up by 35. So he found my Facebook and my daughter's Facebook. Decades are missing. The siblings actually lived in the same Oklahoma town without ever knowing one another. I had no clue. After Bobby was adopted out. You get joy, but at the same time I get pain because I see my niece, I see my sister, and I think all the time that, that, that I, I miss. All right, Ed, I'm going to head to the house. It's time he intends to make up for thanks to a new outlook and true identity. Todd Unger, Channel 8 News.